this session we will talk on tool typology and technology. First, let us talk about stone tool typology. Typology is the method the archaeologist uses to arrange the artifacts in a scheme to show gradual development or degeneration through time. Artifact is the object deliberately made by man exhibiting certain characters for a purpose and the most convincing character of the main made tool is the presence of alternate flaking to produce a regular set pattern. Based on these specific characters, an artifact may be classified as a type. Prehistoric archaeology is the study of stone and bone tools, though it occasionally deals with other artifacts as well. These tools are the non-living cultural remains and archaeologists coined some names mostly on the form, technique and the function of the tool. Regularly pattern tools are considered as the archaeological sign of culture. These early stone tools were apparently made by striking a stone with another stone, a technique known as percussion flaking. The piece of stone thus removed and the bigger lump is respectively known as flake and core and both these are used as tools. If the stone has facet removed from only one surface of the cutting edge, it is called a unifacial tool and when facets are present on both the surfaces of the cutting edge, it is called bifacial tool. Now, let us look at a different type of stone tool. First is hand axe. Hand axe is considered as an all-purpose tool. It is a bifacial tool and it is one of the earliest tools found in Abbeville in France by Boucher de Perth in 1836. It is a diagnostic tool of the lower Paleolithic industries such as Abbevillian and Acheulean and one of the variety of Mousterian. The pear shaped type with thick Flake or unflaked table with suitable hand grip and bifacially flaked narrow cutting edge characterize the hand eggs of the Abbevillian industry. In the Acheulean industry, hand axes are represented by obate, lanceolate, and cordiform, later followed by the microquine type. A feature of certain axes of the Acheulean tradition is reverses as twisted profile. The flake scars present on these types of hand axes are generally small and slender with flattest facets resulting from the cylinder hammer technique. The second tool type is chopper. Chopper is a unifacial tool made generally of a suitable pebble by flaking on one side only. It is a characteristic tool type of the culture of Swan and Punjab and other cultures in the mainland Southeast Asia. The third type is chopping tool. Chopping tool is made on a core or split pebbles by flaking alternately from both the surfaces resulting 
to a jack wavy cutting edge. The next tool type is clever. Clever is an axe made on a lump or massive flake with a broad edge produced by the intersection of a primary flake surface with one or more flake scars on the other side. It is also characteristic tool type of the Acheulean industry of the Lower Paleolithic culture. The next tool is stick. This is a heavy pointed tool distinguished from the hand axe by its massive cross section and elongated pointed edge. The next tool type is scrapper. Scrapper is an artifact made mostly either on a flake or blade for scrapping the skin of animals, thin wooden or bamboo shafts, etc. According to the position and nature of the age for scrapping, it is named as side scraper, end scraper, round scraper, convex scraper, and concave or hollow scraper. Next tool type is borer. It has a thick projected boring edge which has been produced by retouching carefully. It is made on either a flake or nodule by making deep notches on the side. Next tool type is point. Point is generally made on a flake having a pointed edge produced by careful retouching. In form, it is triangular, semi-triangular and roughly leaf shaped. Some have incipient tang and bar. Small thin leaf shaped points could have been served as arrowhead, whereas the larger ones could have been used as spearhead. These are found during the Middle Paleolithic and later period. Next tool type is blade. It is a long, thin, parallel sided blade having one or more mid ridges on the dorsal and the ventral surface represented by single flake scar. This type of tool is very common since the upper Paleolithic time. Next tool type is burin or graver. It is a tool with a narrow chisel edge made on either a flake or blade and it belonged to upper Paleolithic culture. These were primarily used for engraving on soft stone or bone and on the walls of the cave or rock shelter. Next tool type is microlith. Microlith is a very small tool made on a blade of flakes often less than an inch long. Microliths are known as composite tools because these could be used effectively by hafting one or more microliths to a shaft. Triangle, trapeze and unit are some of the very common microlith forms and it is the characteristic tool type of the Mesolithic culture and the old world. However, it continues to be used as sickle blade in the Neolithic period. Next tool type is Neolithic stelt. It is a tool with smooth surfaces, some polish and used as eggs or adds after hafting to a handle during the Neolithic culture. Next tool type is chisel. Chisel is a small, narrow, cylindrical or rectangular tool 
with two of its sides tapering halfway down the cutting edge. The butt end is generally thick for hammering. Next tool type is ring stone. It is generally circular or spherical stone tool with a hole at the middle to hold the shaft of the digging seat or maze. Now let's talk about stone tool technology. We can broadly group the Paleolithic stone tools as core tool, flake tool and blade tool. The tool made out of the core of a lump of stone by striking flakes to form the desired shape, but and cutting edge is called core tool. The choppers, chopping tool, hand eggs, pick and clever are core tools. Tools made from the flex detaches from the core are called flake tool. Scrappers and points are categorized as flake tool while tools met on the parallel sided long flakes detached from flooded core are known as blade tool. Let us now discuss the technology used in making these stone tools by our prehistoric ancestors. First, let's talk about lower Paleolithic stone tool technology. To make a core tool, it requires picking up a big lump of stone and another stone to use as hammer. The lump could be held in the hand or against the knee or laid on another support and the hammer strikes at the edge of the flattened area on the core at an oblique angle. If the force is delivered correctly, each blow will help in detaching a flake from the under surface of the core. If a series of similar blows are delivered at the margin or periphery of the core in alternate direction, this results in number of flake scars converging towards the center of the core. All these flaking to produce a desired shape of the tool are called primary flaking. The blow of the hammer for the primary flaking is freely delivered without control onto the hammer and this is known as free flaking. The next step is to sharpen the cutting edge and prepare a suitable handle by striking off smaller flakes and this is called secondary flaking. Another method of primary flaking is to dash or swing the lump or core against the edge of a larger stone or anvil. The block on block or anvil technique produces thick plates. A method less commonly used was the bipolar technique. In this, the core is placed upon the edge of another rock and struck with a hammer on the other end to remove flakes from both the ends. The advanced technology developed in the early Paleolithic time is the soft hammer technique or cylinder hammer technique. In this case, the hammer is of a cylindrical bone or antler or hard wood. When the force is delivered along the rounded surface of the hammer, it spreads from a larger area of contact, resulting to the removal of thin flat flakes with diffuse bulk. The intersection 
of a series of these flat plates produces a nearly straight cutting edge. It is most likely that initial shaping was done with the stone hammer technique and the cylinder hammer technique is noticed in making the hand axis at a type site of Saint Achille in France and this is the characteristic of Achillean industry. Step flaking or resolve flaking is a further advanced secondary flaking technology developed during the early Paleolithic culture. In this case, the blow of the hammer is controlled and delivered directing towards the center of the core to snap off a flake abruptly leaving an angular junction core. Now, let's talk about Middle Paleolithic Stone Tool Technology. Flake tools form an important characteristic feature of the Middle Paleolithic culture. The unusual flake detached during the process of making core tools are called waste flake. However, a Clactonian technique coined after the type site at Clacton Sea, England, was a technique used by the lower Paleolithic people for obtaining a flake. In the Clactonian technique, a nodule with fairly regular surfaces to serve a striking platform is selected and a blow is given with another stone near the edge of a naturally flattened surface. If the well-directed blow is of suitable strength, a good flake will be detached. Such flakes will have a prominent bulb of percussion on the main flake surface. The angle between the main flake surface and the striking platform is more than 90 degrees or roughly 120 degrees. Named after Levallois Perret in Paris, Levallois technique is an artistic and skillful method of preparing flakes and core. Here, the core is carefully prepared initially by roughly trimming the sides and then from the upper surface, the cortex is removed in such a manner that the flake scars usually meet in the center. The next step is to prepare a flattish place called striking platform by removing minute flakes on the core, preferably at the end point perpendicular to the exit. Such platform is called faceted platform. After that, a sharp blow is given on the platform. A part of the striking platform roughly oval or triangular in shape with a clean undersurface is detached. The angle between the striking platform and the main flex surface is equal to 90 degrees. The flake could now be used as a tool as the margins and the end are sharp enough due to the tongue creating of the flake scars on the upper surface to the clean under surface. The core after the removal of an oval flake is called a tortoise core while the fine concordial flake scar would look like belly or ventral surface. Opposed to this elaborate Levalvan core preparation is a discoid core 
our most daring text. For this, a lump of stone or large clay with suitably flattened surface is taken and flaked around its edge to detach short and broad planes. The resultant core assumes a circular or dish shape. These flake scars on the core could be used as striking platform for detaching a flake with two to four truncated flake scars on the dorsal surface. These flakes are of three inches long and several such flakes could be obtained from a single discoid core. It is more economical than Nivalvan core as only one flake about six or more inches long could be detached from the Nivalvan core. Now, let's talk about Upper Paleolithic Stone Tool Technology. Blade tools are made from the parallel sided long flakes with at least a mid ridge on the dorsal. They are the characteristic feature of the upper Paleolithic culture. For the production of blades, a core is prepared by breaking a large nodule into two with a hammer stone. The maker then knocks long, thin flakes from the outside ring, leaving a tapering slotted core. From this core, a series of finished blades could be opened by striking off one by one in such a way that each includes a pair of the ridges left by the previous round of flaking. Blades often by using Direct percussion with a stone hammer are generally broad. However, narrow blades might have been obtained by using punch techniques. Micro blades and micro lids could also be obtained with a punching technique. Pressure flecking technique was developed during the Upper Paleolithic culture to prepare beautiful tools like deep shaped points. A pointed implement of wood, bone or stone is used for pressing against edge in a downward or upward movement. This results to the removal of plate flakes from the lower or upper surface of the tool. The resultant flake scar is known as fish scale scar. Burin or graver is generally made on blade and form an important characteristic tool of the upper Paleolithic industry. After obtaining a blade from the slotted core, the maker first snaps off the pointed end and using a wood or antler hammer he chips the broken end to make a striking platform. By striking with a cylindrical baton, after resting the blade on an anvil stone at an angle, burin face it could be obtained. If a double bevel is desired, the blade is turned over and flaked again. Now, let's talk about Mesolithic stone tool technology. Mesolithic culture is generally characterized by making tools or microblades. Small studded cores are first prepared using punching technique and then another series of tiny flake blades across the core are detached with the same technique to truncate with the earlier longitudinal flake scars. Next, the core is fixed on the ground with one end. Then the edge of the punch is placed 
on the flat striking platform near the truncated ridge and suitable force is applied resulting in the removal of a microblade. Now let's look at the Neolithic stone tool technology. Neolithic culture is characterized by the making of smooth surface stone tools generally known as cells. A suitable piece of stone is in shape by flaking with a stone hammer. The flaking ridges are removed by striking lightly with a hammer, then ground on a coarse stone slab by adding sand and water, often to smoothen the surfaces. To prepare the cutting edge, it is further ground bifacially or unifacially to get the medial or lateral edge. Pecking is also another technique adopted by the Neolithic man in making the cells out of very hard and tough rock that is difficult and flaking. The maker used a very narrow ended hammer to pick out all over the surface of the stone and ground all over the surfaces. Rectilinear soldered cells is another Neolithic stone tool. The tenon of the cells is supposed to be made by sawing technique. Ring stone is another tool type found during the Neolithic culture to use as weight of the digging stick. Drilling technique was used in making the hole. For that, a suitably sized flattest pebble was selected and a depression is made on both the surfaces at the center by pecking with another stone hammer. In today's session, we discuss about various stone tool types and by studying them, archaeologists, anthropologists and historians who are interested in studying history would be able to unearth the various social, cultural and material aspects of early man. <laughs>